what's cooking up in the kitchen? Am I smelling that soul food? Oh, yes, it is soul food. The spiritual food for your spiritual nourishment. And you know what? This food will never expire. Never expire? I need this food every day. You are listening to these spiritual-based podcasts. There are many podcasts, but this one here is to satisfy your soul, to feed your spiritual hunger. Are you hungry for God? Don't let your soul be hungry. No matter where you are, whatever you are doing now, at work, home, or on the go, you can still listen here and right now the uh, Soul Food Podcast. Don't let ever your soul to go hungry. It's, it's time, time for, for some, some Soul Food. food. Since World War I in 1914, we've seen a spike in violence and wars. Whether for economic or territorial gain, revenge or religion. Nowadays, the war is not necessarily on the battlefield, but on the streets, at work, at home, and even inside of individuals. Hostility and chaos make it impossible to have a home sweet home. Economic crisis and unemployment make it difficult to find one's dream job. Protesters cry out in vain on behalf of the loss of innocent blood. And last but not least, the war within individuals who battle with depression and suicidal thoughts brings the bitter notion that ending one's life will bring the peace they desire. It is clear that the world is fighting for peace. Will it ever be found? What takes away peace? Troubles. What takes away our peace? Troubles. Problems. And when we are in trouble, I said we, me and you, we wish we could go back in time and make things right good. Now it's too late. But always there is a warning. There is a sign. A warning, a sign. But if we don't listen to it's like our own legs takes us to trouble. I had a meeting this morning with the youth. And I was telling them, when I was a teenager, my mother, there was a boy, the same street. He used to go to the same school of mine. My mother told me, I don't want you to hang out with this boy. I don't like this boy. I never answered back my parents. That was a no-no law. You could not answer back. But inside of my mind, I used to say, you don't like, but I do. He's not your friend, he's mine. But she said, I don't like you to go with this boy. And I disobeyed, I disobeyed my parents, my mom, my mother, and I went with that boy. I almost lost my life. I ran away from home. Only because of one friendship. And some of these youth, they told us this morning, they had the same problem. Now, imagine, think with me. When we disobey our parents, we put ourselves in trouble. Imagine when we disobey who? God. It's even worse. If I read something, I need to obey. Maybe today, hey, when you go home, the same person will do something against you. Even today, obey. Obey the scripture. As they say, 
If you don't obey the law, you pay the price. Amen, friends. And I used to think, what, what, she's, he's not her friend, but mine. Let me ask you, who put yourself in trouble because you did not obey your parents? Imagine when we disobey who? God. Especially the mothers. I don't know what these people, mothers, they don't have the eyes. They have x-ray machines. I mean, tell you, <laughs> they don't have eyes. They have x-ray machine. They scan when they say, believe me. Not, you know, 99% they are right. Amen. Now, my friend, imagine the Bible, the Word of God. And when we disobey, we put ourselves in trouble and we lose our peace. We lose our peace. We have no peace 24 7, day and night. The peace is over. It's over. We are going to read Psalm, which says, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. The wicked is the one that does evil, wicked things, wickedness. It says, There is no peace. There is no peace. There is this person in prison that we help, and this person said, Hey, since I came to prison, I am in peace. There is no peace in prison. Struggle is real over there. Dramas. But this lady meant, before I came into prison, I have to be run away from the police. I have to be looking over my shoulders. I had no peace. She said, I, I, I used to take the gun and put under my pillow. Any noise, I have to take the gun to shoot. Day and night, I was in torment. Then I was arrested, sent to prison. When I came into prison, <sighs> this is the peace she's talking about. This is the peace. Because it says, there is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Wicked means wicked, evil things, illegal things, illegal things, illegal money, illegal documents. Everything that you do that is illegal or that you have to hide it steals your, your peace and you live this life of torment, trouble. But there on Psalm 8-1, the Lord is saying, let us read Psalm 8-1, verse also, verse 8. The Lord says, Hear all my people, and I will admonish you, O Israel, if you li will listen to me. The only thing that I want is that you listen to me. Listen, just listen to me. Amen, friends. But the human being does not listen. And then he said, if you follow me on verse 11, he says, but my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would not have none of me. They don't consider me, they don't care about my words. 12, so I gave them over their own stubborn, stubborn heart to walk on their own counsel. Don't take your own counsel. Don't say I know it better. I can do it. I can handle it. No, 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 no. He said without me, you can do nothing. Listen to me. Have your life based upon the word of God. I did not say based upon the church or Bishop Bira, Bishop Joshua, the universal church. No, have your life based upon the Bible. That's why I insist. Read the Bible. I insist. Read the Bible. If you read the Bible, hey, I will never, I myself, I will never brainwash you. If you read the Bible, 
if I myself, I try to brainwash you, you are going to say what? I know the word. Follow the word of the Lord. Have your life based upon the word. This is your foundation. Listen. Do not be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. Stubbornness is from the devil. Stubbornness is from Satan. You said, me too, if I had listened to my mother, when she said, don't go with this boy, and I disobeyed, I put myself in trouble. You too, we are no, not angels. Amen, friends. You are now listening to Soul Food with Bishop Joshua. These are the flowers I would have bought you, and this is the card I would have written you. I've spent most of my life trying to fill in the blanks, asking everyone around me about you, the memories of you tucked away in a box in the attic. I don't remember what your perfume smelled like or what made you laugh, but I'll never forget lying in your hospital bed, drawing pictures with you, your rebellious little six-year-old. I'm writing this because I want to tell you that you are so strong that I wish you didn't have to look at your daughter knowing that you'd never see her get taller, get heartbroken, get married. I'm sorry that I always made you pick me up when you were so weak, that I tripped over your IV pole, that Christmas I complained that I didn't get what I wanted, being afraid of your wig. I'm sorry for the fits I threw, the I love you moms I never got to say, and I'm sorry that it's taken me 21 years to write this card and it's still not perfect. I'm writing this because I'd give anything just to be able to fight with you. I never got to ignore your phone calls because you were too overbearing. I never got to introduce you to girlfriends or boyfriends that you say are bad for me and I tell you that you don't understand, but months later I realize you were right. I'm writing this because I'm angry that I have to live life only part way. All the yearbook pictures I took without you to do my hair, the lunches I made myself. I feel like I'm missing out on a huge part of being a woman because you're not here. Like a part of me is in that coffin with you, holding onto your leg, while I scoot across the floor, begging you not to go. You are so beautiful. It's insane to believe that anyone as beautiful as you ever existed on this earth. I'm writing this because I wish you were here. I wish you could see the woman that I've grown into. I wish I knew which flowers you liked and that I could put them in your hands rather than on a plot of grass with your name on it. I'm writing this because I want to say thank you. No matter how sick you were, all you wanted to do was make sure I felt loved. Thank you for taking me to Disney World while you were in a wheelchair, letting me draw those pictures in your hospital bed, writing me letters like you knew I'd grow up to be who I am, making me feel like I was so special and so smart. I feel like I'll always be that six-year-old with a mind of her own that didn't take orders and doesn't wear dresses that's still waiting for her mom to wake up and tell her that everything's okay again. I'm writing this because I'll never love anyone as much as I miss you. Happy Mother's Day. Do you have your notifications on? Click that bell and make sure you always receive notifications when new episodes arrive here on Soul Food Podcasts. <laughs> You're a pretty girl. You're my angel, my baby, my star, my world. 
Dear Mom, You taught me so much. I am who I am because of you. Come in. I can think of three words. I forgive you. You were good, Mom. You did really good. I remember I just laid at her side and I was just weeping like crazy. I told her everything I was grateful for. I told her, thank you so much for how you raised me. And the sad thing about it is that was the only time I did it. I never did it before. I never told my mom how much I loved her. I never told her, um, I never told her anything until that moment. Dear beloved mothers, Sunday, May 14th at the nearest Universal Church are excitedly gearing up for our upcoming celebration. A day when we take the time to recognize the many ways that mothers show their resilience, passion, sacrifice, love, and kindness toward their children. Oftentimes, these acts go unrecognized, and this special day is all about making sure that mothers everywhere know just how much they are appreciated. We invite all mothers to come join us on this exceptional day and receive a special blessing from God. With warm regards from the Universal Church. Thank you for listening in. That's all the soul food we have to share today. Stay tuned for the next episode on soul food and keep your notifications on. Share this episode with your friends and family to feed their souls. Give the food that lasts forever.